In this presentation, I will introduce the concepts of baseline models, meta-analysis, and replications. Let me start with baseline models. Now, statistical significance tests provide us information whether an observed effect is different from zero. In many cases, however, we're not really interested in this answer. Because for most reasonable interventions, such as a training of nurses, we would expect some average improvement. As indicated earlier, what we're really interested in is the size and the distribution of performance improvements. For the evaluation of the size of the effect, zero or no effect is a very, very low hurdle, oftentimes so low that by itself this information is not very helpful. Hence, we need different, more challenging benchmarks. Assuming again that we're dealing with a training program for nurses in nutrition, we might want to consider the effectiveness of this program in comparison to other programs, maybe the program that we've used before. Such alternative treatments often provide very powerful benchmarks and baseline models. In other situations, simple random processes can serve as meaningful benchmarks. I've in the past studied whether success increases the likelihood of project teams to work together again with the same partners in the future. When you're dealing with a limited pool of individuals, the probability of working again together with the same partner is not zero. But this probability can be calculated and this calculated probability can provide a helpful benchmark for the meaningful interpretation whether a factor like um, prior project success does increase the probability of working again together with the same partners beyond of what we would expect by chance. Hence, random processes can serve as important baseline models. Finally, we often deal with situations where we have underlying trends that need to be taken into account when evaluating changes over time. For example, companies might be on a specific performance trajectory and the value of any hypothesized performance enhancing factor depends on whether it improves the performance trajectory that the organization is already on. Okay, in summary, these few examples of potentially useful baseline models illustrate the importance and usefulness of this concept. These examples, however, are by no means comprehensive. They only offer a reasonable starting point for your own context-specific search for meaningful baseline models. While baselines are currently rarely used in management publications, this graph shows that there is some encouraging evidence indicating that they are gaining more widespread acceptance in business and economics, but also in other fields such as biology life sciences and the social sciences and humanities. If you're interested to learn more about baseline models, I recommend to take a look at the following two publications, one in research methodology and strategy and management, and the other one in advances in international management research. Another promising advancement that moves us beyond statistical significance tests is meta-analysis. Now, meta-analysis is a methodology for the systematic aggregation of findings from multiple prior empirical studies that investigated the same effects. It has the advantage that it reinforces what we've discussed earlier, the importance of effect sizes. It also reinforces the reporting and evaluating of um, uncertainty of the effect in the form of confidence intervals. Finally, it reinforces the conducting of replications, which we will discuss later in this presentation. Still, meta-analysis is an emerging analytic tool, which means it also does have limitations. One of these limitations is publication bias. Currently, over 90% of all published studies in the major journals report statistical significant effects. We know that this is an unrealistic high success rate 
means the input into meta-analyses is likely biased. A second problem is unaccounted heterogeneity. Meta-analytic researchers frequently complain that the published studies do not describe their research design and execution with the necessary detail to enable powerful meta-analyses. In addition, our field is notorious for not conducting straight replication studies. Finally, the execution of a meta-analysis also has the potential to introduce additional biases during the search, selection, and combining of studies. Hence, this tool is far from perfect, but I consider it an important step in the right direction. Finally, the systematic and widespread engagement in replication studies is another methodological advancement that we should not only consider but promote. Replications conduct a similar or highly similar study using a new sample. The advantages are that replications lead to iterative increases in sample size that will improve our confidence into the reported findings. Replications also enable a systematic probing and understanding of boundary conditions of the reported effects. Replications by a different research team control for researcher-specific biases. Finally, replications enable the just-discussed meta-analyses. This raises the important questions, considering all these advantages, why are we as a field not already conducting more replication studies, and how can we make that happen?